All right, so we're going to pick back up where we left off with non-terminating decimals last time. And I believe we're on this slide. Does that look right? Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take a fraction, or take a decimal and put the bar on the top of it, and we want to turn it back into a fraction form. So what we would normally do if this bar were not on top of it is what would we do with the 61? We'd put it over 100, and then we'd reduce it if it's possible to reduce it, right? Okay. Well, that bar on the top of it makes that tricky because it's really not 61. It's a decimal 61616161, and when do you stop? Never, right? So how do I handle this? Well, I'm going to show you this, and this is, um, it's not really a trick, but it is an algorithm, which means a process by which we can handle it, okay? So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as n equals, and there's nothing special about n, your book just uses this kind of thing, okay? n equals. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply by a power of 10. Now the power of 10 is determined by how many decimals we repeat. So if one decimal repeats, we multiply by 10. If we've got two decimals repeating, we we'll multiply by 100. Three decimals repeating, we multiply by 1,000 and so forth. It is not determined by the placement of the end of this expression. It's not because it's 6-1. If this said 0.561 and the 6-1 were still repeating, I'm still going to multiply by 100. Okay, the number of decimals repeating. So here's two decimals repeat. So we'll multiply. By 10 squared, right? There's the 2. And 10 squared is what? 100. So we're going to take this expression and we're going to multiply both sides by 100. Okay, so on the left I get 100n. What you have to remember is what 0.61 means. It means It means point six one six one six one six one, right? So when I multiply by ten, I get one of the six ones to come into the front of the fraction or in front of the decimal, right? So I get six one, but I still have six one six one six one six one after that. Are you with me? So I still have six one repeating. Which doesn't reduce the case. Now, 
you may have had a teacher somewhere along the way that showed you a trick here. And I want to tell you why we're not going to use the trick. Okay? So the trick is that if you have a repeating decimal, right? normally if you had 61 and there's no repeat, you just write 61 over 100. Okay, so the trick is that if you have a repeating decimal, you can just write it over 99. So you write 61 over 99. And that would work just fine with this problem. The problem is that that doesn't generalize that you have some decimals that repeat and some that don't. So if I had a decimal point, and I think that's my next one, a six and a one, and it's only the one that repeats, that process, that trick doesn't work anymore. So that's why I'm showing you this, is because it works in general, instead of just the one case where there's this trick going on. Okay, so let me show you what happens differently over here. I have a six, but only the one repeats. This is again why I want you to be really careful when you're writing these numbers down as you're working. You show me exactly where the, the repeat bar goes and I don't have to guess. Okay, so I start out the same way. N equals 0 0.61, but only the one repeats. So how many digits are repeating? One digit. Okay? So one repeating digit. So we'll multiply by what? 10 to the 1, which is 10. We're going to multiply by a power of 10 that reflects the number of repeating digits. Because we'll multiply both sides by 10. So on the left, I have 10n. Now the right hand side's a little weird. I don't just get to move it and repeat the numbers because both these numbers don't repeat, right? And it may help you to write out a few more digits of what you've really got going on here. So let me do that first. This is 0.61, right, like that, yeah? So when I move the decimal over, right, I move the decimal over and I get a 6. Without a doubt, I get 6.1 repeating. But I don't want to write it as 6.1 repeating because I want the repeating to occur in the exact same location as it did before. Because in a minute here, I'm going to subtract and I want to subtract off the repeating parts, which means the repeating parts have to line up. So watch what would happen if I failed to do this. So let's say you forgot that fact and you wrote it like this, because this is also equal. It's just unhelpful for my next step. Watch what happens. So the next step is always to subtract n. n is equal to 0.61 repeating on the 1. And the 1 repeats don't line up. Are you with me? They need the one repeating to line up, so when they subtract, they, they completely subtract off. So, how I really want this to be, how I write it before, like this. Because then the point one repeating do line up. And now I'm subtracting 6.1 minus 0.6. So I have 9n on the left. What is 6.1 minus 0.6? 5.5. Okay, my goal is again to find out what n equals, so what are you next? Divided by n to 9. Here's the deal. Um, 5.5 over 9 doesn't exactly answer the question of that. So I was only wondering what the goal was, right? The goal said in a fraction form, back at the direction. A over B, where A and B are integers. 5.5 is not an integer, right? So how can I change 5.5 over 9 so that they are integers? You can't just have a Okay, but you won't have a reciprocal of turning into 1, and then I have to have a reciprocal line over 5.5 over there. possibly could go into an improper fraction. You're still going to have issues from with the decimal point because you're not going to get rid of the decimal point initially. I think it's going to be easier to do. No gentle. What am I going to times by 10? Yes. I like multiplying 5.5 by 10 because it becomes 55. No more decimals, right? This is good. 
Now, I'm still not in reduced form, but I at least don't have any decimals involved. You know, they're not even bottom. So 55 divided by 5 would be 11. And 90 divided by 5? I think it's 18, too, yeah. So you didn't have to let them break. No trick, right? I didn't get over 99 like I would have gotten if I just followed the trick for uh, somewhere in the long way, which I can imagine you've heard that before. I know that I have. So. All right. Take another example. Find any decimal between 0.9 repeating and 1.1. 1 .1. Any value you want between. You could do one point zero. I think what it wants is a true decimal, so let's go a little bit bigger. How about 1.01? Let me show you why one won't work. Okay. So yeah, we could do 1.01. You could do 1.05. Do 1.08. It doesn't matter, right? But here's why one won't work. So it has equal to 0.9 repeating. I'm going to turn it into its decimal form or into its uh, fraction form. So I would multiply by what? 10, right? Because I've got one decimal that repeats. So this becomes 10 in on the left. What is 0.9 repeating times 10? 9.9 repeating. And then I subtract in, which means subtracting the 0.9 repeating. What are we on the left? 9n. And on the right? 9. And then what happens? n is equal to 1. So point 0.9 repeating is equal to the number 1. It's a little weird, isn't it? So there, I mean, which adds a fraction, I guess you credit it to whatever. Now, if you stopped the nines at some point, it wouldn't just right. But if the nines repeat forever, just what point nine repeating means, you have the value of one. I have a distinct memory from high school. Uh, two students wanted to go to two because they were dating at the time, arguing at length with the teacher of the fact that this is a future. And it is true. Point nine repeating does, in fact, equal one. And that's why I want to go just a slight bit bigger. And then, in fact, on part B, it says find the distance halfway between them. So now it's really helpful for me to have written it as the number one. Because how do you find something halfway between two other values? How do you do that? Halfway point, we'll call something say midpoint. You add them together. Okay, so I'm going to write the point nine as the number one, because it's easier to write. Plus my 1.1. And then I divide them by two. It's also what is called an average, right? So we do an average for grades. We took exam one and exam two and average them together to find your exam average was. This is what we do. So what is one plus one point one? Two point one. And what's two point one divided by two? Plus five sevenths is easier to compute than 
and 0 0.142857 repeating plus 0 0.714285 repeating. Do you agree? You do not want to add those repeating decimals together. If you do, be my guest. So those look like money. And here's another example. 0 0.4 plus 0 0.25 is easier to compute than 2 fifths plus 1 fourth. Right? Yes, absolutely. So describe situations in which you would think that it would be easier to work with fractions than with decimals and vice versa. So some sort of pros and cons of the locations or the times in which you wouldn't want to do one and you wouldn't want to do the other. And these are two examples that sort of should lead you down the right path. Here. So tell me when you would want to work with decimals. When do decimals add nicely? Okay, so um, that's sort of a discounting against the fraction. So let me go. Well, um, so what is it about these decimals that makes them easy? Let's do it this way. Let's say this way. What is it about these decimals that makes them easy to add and these decimals that doesn't? Say that. Terminating. Yeah, the repeating issue makes things complicated, right? So decimals that are terminating. Right. 